Welcome to the River Brewing Company. I'm Lionel McCauley, the head brewer here. And we are sitting in beautiful Victoria Falls, of course, right next to the Zambezi River. <clears throat> so let's start with that. That's why we call ourselves the River Brewing, is because we have the fourth longest river in Africa, which touches six countries, the Zambezi, flowing right behind us. You can also, of course, hear the falls from here. So the brewery is based upon that river, our water source from there. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we make beer here, the beer brewing process. So what we do is we start with the base malt, which is usually on most beers around 80% of the overall mash bill. We mill it, we add whatever specialty malts we're using, depending upon the beer. You know, if we're making a porter, we have some chocolate malt. If we're making an IPA, we might use a Caramunic one to caramelize the body a bit. So we mill it here, and then we go to our mash tun. We mash into here. We take water from our hot liquor tank from Jake, put it into Bozzard, into the mash tun, and then we let it sit, depending upon the style of beer, 60 to 90 minutes at controlled temperature. Another beautiful thing about this, jacketed, I can warm it, I can cool it perfectly. Once this is done sitting, we pump back the wort, the sweet wort, into our kettle, into Norman. Then once we get it into Norman, then we bring it to a boil. And depending upon the beer again, do about you know 60 to 90 minute boil. And this is where we do all of our hop additions. Another lovely thing that we're able to source even all the way up here in the bush is uh, beautiful hops from the Czech Republic to South African hops to, of course, the Pacific Northwest hops, uh, German hops, English hops. So depending upon the beer style, I have a wide range of hops. And then we do all of our hop additions here and do our boil into this. Once we've completed our boil process, we then pump back out. We cool the beer in route to our unifermenter tanks. Once we get it in the unifermenters and get it at the appropriate temperature, that's where I do my yeast additions. And then that's where we let it sit for the duration of the yeast till we get the gravity low enough and have converted those sugars into alcohol. From there, once that's done, we move it into the bright tank, into Meggy Moo or Amara or Ben, and then we let it uh, condition there. Depending upon the beer, once again, all kinds of different times. And then we go from there to bottling or kegging. That's a, a very quick, short rundown. So we're here uh, trying the food for the first time today with some dishes, which has absolutely been delicious. And also looking at how the beers pair with different food. So I'm sitting here with our new executive chef, Mark, and uh, the sous chef, Riyadh, and of course the bar manager, Jake. And if you see us smiling proficiently, it's because we're very happy, because it's absolutely delectable. Yeah. So Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about what we ate? No, fantastic. Um, I've gone very, very simple to go very elegantly with perfectly crafted beer. Um, I didn't want to overpower the beer as the beer in the brewery is obviously the focal point. So what I've done is I've got a nice big chunk of hearty ribeye, nice and well and grass-fed beef to go with um, oven roasted potato wedges, you know, just nice, clean, simple, elegant, um, and a whole lot of pickles and sauces and things to go to go with that. Um, I've done pork belly with red cabbage sauerkraut um, and like, I, like I've said many times before the Germans will tell you beer and pork it's an absolute winner <laughs> and no one else in town does pork belly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gone and done sticky chicken um, again it's it's wonderful eat with your fingers eat with a knife and fork Drink a couple of pints of beer, you can't go wrong. Clean, clean simple. Uh, Plowman's platter for those that don't want anything too heavy for lunch or a light evening meal. This section that goes with each mm. each menu, each dish. Um, what do we got there, Mark? Um, so I've got pickled jalapenos. Okay. I've got veg, uh, veg chutney. Sorry, lost my words there for a second. Um, yellow crunchy onion just to add a bit of cleanliness and a bit of freshness mm. to your palate before you attack your next beer or your next mouth of food, sticky chicken. chicken. <laughs> um, we've got some smoked feta. Mm. Um, yeah, again, just to add a different mm. dimension. I've got 
some different chili sauces. I've got a sweet chili sauce, I've got a hot chili sauce. I've done an onion marmalade, which goes really well with brie and camembert and things on the, um, on the plowman's platter. And again, the jalapenos for a bit of a kick and a bit of spice. Oh, excellent. Everything is nice, fresh, clean, and simple. And what I love about, what I love about Mark, with the, the way he thinks as a chef, is he's looking at the beer styles to begin with. You're looking at the beer styles to begin with and then building food off of it. Instead of the other way around, which a lot of places kind of think about, yeah. okay, I've made this food, now I've got to try to mix and match what styles of beer go with it. And of course, anyone can drink whatever they want with whatever food. Everybody's palate's slightly different. But if you think about the idea of that, where the beer is a centerpiece and then the food's built around the beer, for me, that's a, a wonderful creative relationship yeah. we're going to have. Nine months, nine months opened yesterday. Yes. And uh, and here we are. Can you believe we got this far? It's been a journey. It's been it a journey. has it's been, been a journey. Not all, much of a roller coaster, but building a brewery in the bush is just not an easy thing. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> Cheers. This is the kind of the book that where we where we started. Um, you know what the sign should look like. Um, there's the logo, which is all hand drawn. So, yeah, and developments on the river, developing the typeface for the river itself. Um, yeah, and oh, what is it? What is it? Bar? What is the bar meant to look like? So this is this is the this is the uh, the moleskine of how to make the how to make the brewery. So part of the design process that I've never you know that I always maintain is you've got to start by drawing by hand. You know what I mean? So that by hand is come you know, comes to basically what the structure is going to look like, what the signage, what the feel of the place is all part of of going back to old school drawing in a sketchbook. This re river element is uh, is kind of a, an associated graphic. It's something that we've uh, incorporated even in, in the logo, and it's. Uh, it's just a, a sliver of river that you would see when you look at a um, at an aerial photograph of a river. How it meanders is the inspiration. So I've kind of grinded all of that onto it, and it's run throughout. We run it throughout in, uh, as this lick. It's a bit of, it's a bit wicked, but beer is wicked, you know. And I believe the keystone of the River Brewing Company, the reason we all ended up here is our passion for beer. Kind of have this uh, dual idea about being able to brew in traditions and you know, give respect to the generations of brewers that have done amazing things, especially out of countries like Belgium, and of course now with the evolution of beer in the United States, but also blaze new grounds. And another key aspect of this brewery is the Zambezi River. I mean, if I step out the doors right now, I can hear the Victoria Falls. And this incredibly vibrant river flows very close to here, and I get to source my water from that river. So as a kid growing up who dreamt of Africa and dreamt of the Zambezi River, to now in this space be able to access that water, source it, and then make a range of beers in a variety of styles, that, that's pretty special to me. I think the river itself is uh, such a key feature of this brewery. And I think another aspect of this brewery that is quite special as well is if you think about geogra geography influencing beer, which most certainly it has, and influencing brewers, this is a, a new palette, a new range of beers we're going to be able to make from the geographical location, from indigenous fruit to just the, for lack of a better word, for the overall vibe of a place and how it influences the creation of beer, the creative process. So for me as a brewer, being in Zimbabwe, which is stunningly amazing, being so close to the river and then having this place, it's a, it's a perfect storm.